I hope you remember this. What do you have to say to future Amanda? Oh, future Amanda, I love you and I love you in the future. Future Amanda, you have made me proud. You've done everything I ever asked you to do. He never asked her to do anything though. <laughs> Is this confusing you, Bob? Yeah. How would I know? I'm confused all the time anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Swap that last part out. Okay, edit that out. You can edit it too. Hello, welcome back. Mm -hmm. ah. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda Jewel, and it feels weird like starting a YouTube video knowing that I'm going to be talking about something I have never wanted to happen. <laughs> so I just wanted to give a quick update and full circle kind of close to my grandmother's passing. I have been living with my grandparents since the pandemic <laughs> since the pandemic started in March of 2020 and I have lived with them up until now helping take care of my grandma who has cancer and Alzheimer's and it was a beautiful thing truly I'm so close with my grandparents and this just really kind of brought us together even more because I was able to really caretaker basically a nurse for the past year, which is an experience that is just so valuable. I love how like the birds are chirping. I'm just gonna tell myself it's a good sign. If it's annoying to you, I'm so sorry, but my grandmother was such a lovely lady. She truly was so strong and beautiful and hardworking. <laughs> she used to be an accountant and back in the day she was like the lead person in her department but they would call her lead girl because of the glass ceiling and eventually she became the president of a credit union and so it just gives me so much inspiration to keep going and push past generational societal boundaries and anywho so the whole thing was she went into hospice towards the end of my senior year at UT Austin, which the videos that I'm editing now that have been out throughout um, the month of June were all from May. And it's kind of like, that was when things started moving really fast in the decline of her health. Um, in my vlogs, I don't really put her in them that much because she didn't like the camera. And so sometimes it wasn't really a concept that she cared about, like me trying to get memories. Instead, she was just didn't want the camera and I respected that because I also had in my mind, like if I didn't record her or her stories or whatever, up until her last days, it would give her like more time. That's not how it works. But in my mind, it was. And so you'll see my grandpa a lot, but you don't really always see my grandma which sucks uh, now in retrospect, but in the time it was respectful for her, which is more important, right? I've been so close with my grandparents my entire life. Like my grandma definitely raised me and she was just such an awesome woman. I can't even say it enough. <laughs> she got really bad towards the last weeks of school and then I went away to graduation. By then she was in hospice and in her hospital bed and then I was gone for graduation and I came back for like 12 hours before I got on the flight to Mexico. And I knew by going to Mexico, it could have been my last time seeing her, but there were so many moving parts. Like my dad had bought the trip to Mexico back in April. There was a lot of money spent on it and the air and the flights. And then there was also like, my grandmother was given six months to live over four years ago. So I've spent the past four years of always being like, is she about to die? Like, is she gonna be gone? Is this the last time we're gonna see her? That at a certain point you have to make selfish decisions like going to Mexico. And it all happened perfectly because I don't believe I should have been here that week. In the Mexico vlog, I don't know if I really talk about it because I haven't edited it yet, but I was so anxious, it was really hard for me to wind out, like wind down and and I think a part of it was also knowing that she was leaving me probably really stressed me out too, even if it was just like a subconscious thought. Towards my last few days in Mexico, 
I got the call that she was put on 24 hour care, which means like they know you're gonna pass really at any moment. So you have to have 24 hour service with hospice nurses. And um, when I had said goodbye to my grandmother on that Monday when we left for Mexico, I had asked if she would wait until Saturday and she said yes. And so I took that as like, she's gonna wait till Saturday so she can see me and say goodbye. Um, but since she got on 24 hour care that Thursday that we were in Mexico, I tried to find an earlier flight home on Friday and it didn't let us. And then Saturday rolls around. I like wake up to a panic attack and we get to the airport around noon and our flight continues to get delayed three times. By the third delay of our flight, my cousin starts calling me and then calling my boyfriend and I knew when someone calls your significant other, like there's some serious news. So I had accepted that she probably passed, but I didn't want to know. So I turned my phone off um, and basically my body went into like a full panic attack. I was shaking uncontrollably. I couldn't really breathe very well. It was really hot. I definitely didn't want to wear my mask, which <laughs> when you're traveling is like really not the best thing, but um my mouth went numb i've never had that happen where like my literal mouth went numb um and i cried myself all the way to the front of the plane so got on the plane first <laughs> but yeah and then i had landed in dallas and when i landed in dallas and my phone turned on that's when i got the official news that she had passed while i was waiting to get on the plane in mexico it was sad but then I got home and there was a lot of family here which was great because she passed around like um, our family which is awesome but I went into her room and it felt so like it felt like there was like a hole in me like my person that I had spent the last like year and every other day with right like they're gone and I've never lost anyone before so like that was really weird to be like okay they're not here right now and they're never going to be and that's what like really sucked and this was during when Dallas was having like a lot of rain and so the day after my grandma died it was so dark like that day and the day after which was Memorial Day um, it was like raining all the time it was so like there was like no, not even a little bit of sunshine or overcast it was like dark in the sky and it I mean it felt appropriate <laughs> but it made my mental health really bad um, and that whole week from Saturday which was the day that she died May 29th till Saturday June 5th which was her funeral that was the hardest week of my entire life um, I was supposed to start my full-time job the Tuesday after Memorial Day and I asked them if I could have the week off um, to handle the funeral because since I am so close with my grandparents it was it really like came down to me and some of my cousins and other family members to really get everything together and to plan the funeral which I had never done before and so that like was really hard and there were days where I didn't think I was gonna make it out and I felt crazy and I felt weak and I felt sick like I literally felt so sick all week I was so anxious like having panic attack after panic attack and like not fun at all <laughs> um, but today is Sunday the day after her funeral and I feel a lot better because yesterday was beautiful she would have loved the service and all of her loved ones were together there were so many flowers so many kids like it was supposed to rain and it didn't and the sun shone and the sun shining today even though it was supposed to rain again so it was a real full circle moment and I feel stronger getting through it. I know that the conversation is just now beginning about her life and she's not gone until we stop talking about her, <laughs> which we're never gonna do. Um, and I'm just so thankful to share a piece of this story and her story on the internet. And I mean, I definitely will talk more and more about like the grieving process in future videos um, but tomorrow I start my full-time job so I definitely want to vlog that and I wanted to kind of give as much detail as possible to 
how I handled all of this because in the moment like too I wish I could have vlogged and been like this is this is crap like I feel like shit right now like I'm sad I've got to do this I've got to help with that but it just wasn't appropriate obviously <laughs> and it also just is for the best that we could put a bow on yesterday and call it closure in a way um, not for her life, but just for this week, okay? I just I just need this week to be put in a little box and stored away and let me learn from it and grow from it, but move on from it. But yeah, so I just wanted to update that. I'm glad that it's so beautiful outside right now. And I'll continue to take care of my grandpa and we'll make it. It's gonna be hard, but we're gonna be okay. So if you have lost someone that you love, I'm very sorry. I know, I now know how hard this is. I usually cry all the time, so I'm glad I made it through all of this without crying. I had to speak at the funeral yesterday and I, I barely made it because a girl was crying, but it's okay. <laughs> um, thanks for watching. It feels weird to tell you to subscribe right now, uh, but I will talk to you in the next video.